Hey, this is Scott with Rizzo Controls, and in this video, we're going to log into our JSIS station that we've already commissioned. We're going to set up our BACnet network, or add one, then set it up, and go discover a BACnet over IP device. So where I'm going to begin here is log into the station named Scott's Cool Station. And if I expand my station, I have my root containers here. I'll expand config and I'm going to double click drivers. And in my drivers container here in my AX driver manager view, I like new buttons. So I'm going to click the new button on the bottom of my view pane and I get this new dialog box. In this drop down menu, I'm going to select the regular BACnet network. If you're using something like Distech devices and you need the BCP BACnet network, that's very similar. In this case, we want the regular BACnet network, and I'll click OK. I can rename this if I choose, but I think that's a perfect and really appropriate name. So I'll click OK, and there the BACnet network will be added into the driver's container. Now, once this BACnet network driver is added to my database, I need to do three things before I can go discover the devices on that particular network. Three things are setting a local device ID, picking an adapter, and then enabling that adapter. The only caveat on top of that is if we use an MSTP segment, we'll need to also pick a MAC address. So in this case, go back to Niagara, and where I'm going to set my local device is under my drivers, under my backend network, there's a local device here. If I go to its AX property sheet, one of the first properties toward the top is the object ID. In this case, I'm going to make my object ID 19 and then click Save. That's the first thing. The second thing is picking an adapter. Where I'll pick my adapter is under BACnet COM, under Network. I'll double click that IP port and then expand Link. This is where I'm going to pick an adapter. And in this case, I want to be EN1. EN1 is the secondary port. And EN0 is the primary port. I'll click Save. Good, that's the IP address I wanted. The last thing I have to do is enable this particular adapter. So I'll just change this enabled slot down here to True. Click Save again, and now that our three things are set, I should be able to go back to my BACnet network driver in the BACnet device manager view and go discover these controllers. In this case, if you see that discover is grayed out like this match button, you gotta check one of your three things. I'll click discover, and in this case, I'm gonna send a send global in case that the device I want to discover isn't in the same network. Haha, -ha, it discovered this heating plant controller. If I double click that heating plant controller, maybe I don't want its device ID in the name, just change it to heating plant. If I needed to change any kind of backnet properties, I could also do that here. In this case, I don't need to, so I'll just click OK. And I've added that device to my JSIS database. You'll notice in the nav tree, that device is also available here. If I expand that device, it has a points container. And I can go discover points from that device to add it to this heating plant controller. I'll click Discover. And if I wanted to add the hot water pump one control point, I could double click it. If I want it to be writable, I could change the type to Boolean writable. Remember it's BACnet, so disable a writable um, points will typically write when they're enabled by default. I'll click OK and I could do that a hundred times to add a hundred of these points. You can also highlight them, hold down select, hit another point and highlight everything between and click and drag to the database, and you can add more than one point 
at one time. That's how we add a backnet over IP device to our JACES backnet over IP network adapter and driver.